because God had put something on my heart today that that I really needed just to try to get clarity to and just to speak on. And it's two things that I need to speak with you about. One is uh, titles in the church. We want to discuss that a little bit so I can get a little clarity on that because there's some confusion. And I know over the years people have come up with different things that they say about who can be what and who can't and all that. church so that's what the church i know there's a lot of scripture out there that denies women a lot of things but let me tell you something god can use a woman to do anything just like he can a man so we're gonna go over that and but first i want to go over the things about titles uh me personally i just want to say can i just be can can i can i come to you right today uh there are titles that have been given and there's there's some titles in the bible that discusses those things so uh I just wanted to say that I'm going to read a couple of scriptures that talk about different titles and but what we must do as saints with these titles. OK, uh, of course, everybody knows this familiar one from First Timothy 3, 1, 7. It says this is a true saying. If a man desired the office of a bishop, he desired a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilantly sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality and have to teach. Now, let me stop here for just a second. <clears throat> you know, here it says that person must be blameless. Now, we know that everybody's not perfect. So you have to try to strive to do the best you can in God with that as far as blameless. But the thing that gets people with this scripture is the husband of one wife. Now, you got to remember, during this time when this was written, it was a time when people had more than one wife and they were practicing uh uh, you know, having more than one wife. I mean, even some of the, <clears throat> excuse me, even some of the uh, the people that was in rulers of the of, of Israel at the time had more than one wife. You know, Solomon had several concubines and stuff like that. So basically what this is saying is we want you to, you can have one wife. Now, it's just not talking about someone in this position has been married more than once. That's a whole different story because even Moses gave the bill of divorcement during his time. So, you know, you can't even go by that. But a lot of people will try to use the scripture to say that, well, if you've been married before and now you're divorced and you marry somebody again, you can't be a preacher or you can't be a bishop or you can't be this. That's not what the scripture is saying. So let's not twist it up just to do what we want to do with the words. Let's take the word for what it is. All right. So it says not giver to wine, no striker, nor greedy of filthy liqueur, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that rule it well his own house, having the children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take charge of the church? Okay, so basically that's right. I mean, you gotta be able to have uh, things going on right in your home. And if you can't run your house, if you're not running your house, then how are you gonna be in charge of uh, a whole congregation of people? So that that's all I'm gonna say there. But you know, then we're gonna go to the qualifications of deacon. But let me say this before I go to that. Being a bishop or a pastor of a church over a church does not give you more authority over anybody else in that church. It does not mean that you're holy, so holy that you're gonna make it in because of that title. The title is just what it is, a title. It's not anything else, but just to let everybody know the, dist the distinction of you and what your position is in the church. It doesn't mean you're going to heaven and that you God, God got you because you're in that position. That's not true. Stop putting the, your pastors and, and all these people of authority and leadership on high pedestals. Yes, they need to get their reverence of, of the position they're in, but you don't want to put them in such a way that they're so high and mighty. So when they do something wrong in your face, you lose your faith because of what happened to them. They're people just like you trying to get in. So you can't put them in high regard, in such high regard that if something happens to them and they fall off their pedestal for a minute, you like losing your whole life, your whole soul is gone, your whole walk in Christ is gone because now, oh, the pastor failed. Oh, I just can't believe he was that way. Well, you can't do that. They got to get in just like you. The word that comes through them is for them as well. So just like for the qualification of deacons, that the reason why a deacon was even designed is because the preachers, the apostles, were out there, you know, they were doing a lot of work and they couldn't, you know, they were trying to preach and teach the word of God. So they was in a position where they were starting to grow and they couldn't do waiting on tables and stuff like that to try to earn money to keep. So they had to get deacons to do that. And that's why they chose seven deacons. And in Acts 6, 1 and 7, it talks about this. And in those days, 
when the number of disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration, see? Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye not, look ye out among seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we appoint over this business. Now I can keep going at first, because it says about uh, and gives themselves continually to prayer and ministry of the word. Okay, so they needed people, they needed help, saints. Just like the pastor needs help in the church. You know, he can't do everything or she can't do everything. And I'm, I'm saying she, and I'm explaining that to you. They can't do everything on their own. They need God, but they also need people to help them. That's, that has a like-minded spirit and those that have the Holy Ghost and want to do the right things to help. And that's what deacons are for. That's what they do. Okay. All right. Also in uh, 1 Timothy 3, 8 through 13, it says, Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greed of filthy liqueur, holding the ministry of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved that they, that them use the office of deacon be found blameless. Okay, it's the same thing to be a deacon, basically to be a pastor or a bishop. Same qualifications. Now, you know, here it says, let the deacons be the husband of one wife, ruling the children in their own house. Same qualifications, okay? Now, I know it says men, wife, all this, okay? We gotta remember the times when this was written, okay? So Jeremiah 3, 15 uh, says, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So let's understand what that means. What that's saying basically is, he's giving you pastors. It didn't say men or women. He said he's giving you pastors, people that are gonna be over you to, that God is using as a vessel to tell the people what this says the Lord. So, I think a lot of pastors, a lot of people in the ministry try to use some of these scriptures to keep women out of positions because they didn't want women to be in these positions. I know Paul spoke that women should be sitting back and have their hair covered and shouldn't be over them. Man, God is Paul talking, okay? And we take the word for, for him as if he's the authority of everything. Y'all ain't hearing me. Well, let me say this, Ephesians 4, 11, and he gave some pastors I said apostles and prophets and evangelists, and like I said, but you know, God is going to use who he can. He used a donkey to tell uh, somebody to do something. So why can't he use a woman? Why can't he? Okay. Now the, the title of reverend, a lot of people get that confused because they know it comes from Catholicism and it's used a lot. But in Psalms 111, 9, it also kind of speaks of that. But you got to look at how it's being done here. He sent redemption unto his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverent is his name. Now they're talking about God here. And according to some people who read the Bible, they say that the, the title of reverence should only be used for God. Well, that's true, but it ain't true because yes, he is reverent, but if a person is, is coming in his name and coming in him and doing those things, you are being reverent of God with the same spirit. So the title reverend is not restricted it can be used so we're not going to you know get deep into that but i'm just saying the main thing is to keep people uh in their place by not putting them just because they have a title doesn't mean that they're uh, so holy that they can't do nothing wrong or they can't make it we are all in the flesh we must remember that we are in the flesh which includes pastors and those that are uh, over people what the difference is is a pastor is someone or people of authority in the church is someone that is in more high regard and has more on them because of the position they're in. But it doesn't mean that they're gonna automatically make it in. And y'all gotta understand that, okay? So here, here what's women being pastors or women doing anything? Now we know that there's some negative stuff in there that Paul wrote about women not being able to do certain things, but that can't be true because, first of all, most of the people that's in the church are women. So if, if that was the case, then God can't get nothing done because a lot of men don't want to be right in, 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 in church and do right. Y'all ain't listening to me. But let me tell you this. There are some who believe that 1 Timothy 2 and 12 forbids a woman to be a senior pastor or a pastor or, or in any ministry. But it does not forbid the ordination of a woman in the office. Okay. 
Others feel that a woman can serve as an associate pastor or in another expression of pastoral ministry. There are others still who believe that the office of deacons over the women, but they don't want them to be over men. See, that's kind of crazy. But that's men thinking that way because they worried about a woman gonna do something better than them, probably. Anyway, there's ex there's several women in the Bible that were in positions that did things for, to help to get the kingdom forward where it is. But the one that I want to focus on today is Deborah. Now, Deborah was the only woman judge or ruler of Israel. She ruled about 1227 BC through 1198 BC. She was also a prophetess. Okay, she was the wife of Lebador and held court under the palm tree of Deborah. Deborah seemed to hold her court under the palm tree with Deborah for a number of years, and this may have been for more than 30 years. But the extra, this extraordinary woman, the reason why I bring her up, because she is an extraordinary woman, was a prophetess and a judge in the ancient Israel, Israel, and she was one that helped them to get forward. And she even became a general in the Israelite army because she was the one that told them under God's inspiration that they had to go against the, uh, you know, fight against the Canaanites. Okay. Under God's inspiration, she did an extraordinary and daring thing. She took command of the Israelite people and convinced them to fight the better equipped and trained Canaanite army led by a terrifying Canaanite general named Serira. The general Deborah appointed to lead the Israelites was none too enthusiastic about the task. He was a sensitive man and could see the Israelites were outcasts. Now she's talking about, uh, you know, the guy that she was going against, Syria. But Deborah was able to convince him he could win. There he only uh, agreed to fight if she was there. Okay, so this general that she was helping with, with the Israelites, they didn't even want, they didn't want to fight unless she was there because because God was with her. Okay, she being the prophetess, she led that fight. Okay, so uh, when she did that, she was in God's will. So what are we saying here? What we're saying is, is you kind of stop listening to people about what women's positions are in the church. You know, they don't have to sit in the back and be and be quiet like it says that Paul was saying, because God is going to use whatever He needs to get His word out to the people. And if it's a woman that's being called to do it, so be it. We agree with that. And at Harmony House of Deliverance, that's what we're going to do. Just like in Judges 4, and this is where it comes from, Judges 4, 3, and 6. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron. In 20 years, he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lebanon, she judged Israel at that time. And she dwelled under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for our judgment. And she sent and called Barak. And that's what we were talking about earlier. Barak was the guy that she was helping to fight the uh, Canaanites. Uh, the son of Abinar out of Kedeshaphat and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor and take with thee 10,000 men of the children of Nephathah and the children of Zebulun? So listen, again, faith and obedience is, is, is in play here. Faith and obedience is in play here. So we got to stop looking at uh, people and looking at things like uh, who's authorized to be in place. Because you got to remember, most of the New Testament was written by Paul and a lot of it was him. And the reason why they give Paul a lot of credit is because of his position back then. He was a Pharisee that was converted. He, would, he didn't even walk with God, but he was converted later after Yahweh left or Yahshua the Messiah left. And he came down to him on the road to Damascus, as you know, and he made him an apostle. Matter of fact, the other apostles didn't want to recognize Paul, but he's the apostle of the Gentiles. And he did go out and go forth. And most of the New Testament was recognized because of what he did and because of his leadership or not leadership, but because of his learning and him knowing the law. So I'm not saying that Paul got this credit what he says, but what I'm saying is, is that let's stop taking what we want from the Bible to, to make people do what we want them to do like, or to, to stop them from doing what, what God is calling them to do. If a woman is called to preach, then she needs to do what God called her to do. So I just want to leave that with y'all today and I just want to uh, thank you for your time. And you know, if you got any other questions or anything that you want to bring up, just 
feel free to reach out to me at Harmony House of Deliverance and we will do what we got to do to get you the answer. God bless you and have a smile upon you. And we hope that this was a help for you. God bless.